Hey, welcome back. I've been recoding the planet's terrain generation. This time, I'm going to use compute shaders so that my code can run in parallel on a graphics card. This has a much higher performance when compared to running the code on a CPU. If you want to use the CPU version, you can uncheck this tick box. To make the planet, I begin by generating six planes to form a cube. In my case, I've split up each plane into 256 subplanes. If we take each position on this cube, normalize it and multiply it by some planet radius, we get a sphere. The reason that I split up each plane into subplanes is to allow for these subplanes to be generated, unloaded and loaded when needed. This will help with the generation time and decrease the memory required. A sphere does not really make an interesting planet, so I'll be adding noise depending on the vertex position. There is this wonderful technique you can do with smooth noise, which is to add together different scales of different intensities. This here is our first layer of noise. We can then add much finer noise on top of it at a lower intensity. And lastly, this is the third layer, which has quite a high intensity. Now it's really starting to look interesting. On a side note, I am offsetting these Perlin noise values by large numbers. This will make the planet look much different every playthrough, as these numbers are randomly generated when the game begins. At this point, my meteorites were still using the old code and were floating above the planet's surface. So I converted this code and it worked to charm, but they didn't really blend in with the planet. So I gave the compute shader a list of meteorite positions and done a cosine wave depending on the distance to the closest meteorite. After some adjusting, it does look like a good dent where the meteorite had hit the planet's surface. It blends in a lot better now. The crashed spacecraft needed to sit on the planet's surface nicely, so I generated a flat spot around it. I also gave the ship's crash direction, and used the cosine trick once again. I made the cosine wave get larger at the back and smaller at the front of the ship, as if it had come in for a crash landing and everything behind it moved. I then done similar surface deformation techniques for the satellite, the clay deposits, and the crevice. Next up, I wanted to rework how the planet was textured, as my current system has seams and distortions on the planet's surface. This was a bit too difficult for me to do in a compute shader, so I ended up using Shader Graph. The idea was to use triplanar mapping, which is where you project your texture on both the X, Y, and Z axes, and then blend between them depending on the surface normal. Here you can see this effect when using a checker texture. There is no clear seam, which is absolutely brilliant. And this is it with one of my planet textures. Also, I'd like to mention that Shader Graph gives very cool looking planets when using the local position and surface normal values as an output colour. I then made this graph a subgraph so that I can hide all of the maths, and also do the same for the roughness, metalness and normal maps. Looking at the planet from this far away, it looks quite good, but when you're on the planet's surface, it's quite zoomed in and pixelated, so I scaled everything down. At this point, there was not much variation in the planet, it all seemed very grey. So I'm using a second texture and I'm blending between them using some more 3D smooth noise. This definitely breaks up the planet's surface and makes it look more interesting. Lastly, you may have noticed that some planes have odd lighting. This was due to a reflection probe in the spacecraft. So I fixed that and don't ask what happened to the ship. And that sums up this video. If you would like to know more about this game, you can check out the game's Steam page, which is where you can wishlist it. You can also watch the game trailer right here on YouTube. I'd like to say thank you very much for watching, and have a wonderful day.